Okay, so a bit of an update because I've been really stuck and I haven't filmed everything I probably should have. So just gonna run you through where we're at and then we're gonna go through tonight's content of, which we'll get to very soon. So inside here, I've just done a temporary battery to hook this up for now, but I've got my, um, if I re-hook that up there, out of the way, um, my switch panel in, it's wired up, just to the temporary battery as I said. I've now done some lighting inside, so that's all good. I'll run through that in a second, how I've done that one. Um, I've done, I think that's, oh, what was that one? I think that's travel, bu travel buddy power. That is fridge power. And then I've got the fans inside are all turned on as well, which that's kind of cool, because that means everything works. This one, the bottom ones are going to have on, I'll turn it on. on if it's on manual there, they turn on. I can also obviously turn them up as well. So everything sort of nice there. So the top ones are extracting, the bottom ones pushing air in, which is exactly what the um, the fridge recommends from there. So that's kind of all the switches loaded up for there. So the two fans, I can have that one on auto permanently. So if that's if that's oh wait, wrong one, one of them. So that's turned on, I'm going to have that on auto so it comes on with a temperature sensor which I've, which I've mounted up at the top fan. Figure it's going to be hotter at the top so I kind of want it to turn on more often than not at all pretty much. Um, so the two fans there and everything else can work from that point. Mounted the uh, controller for the inverter and, and my two GPOs down here as well. So from behind, I know it looks like a complete mess. Forgive me, it, it will get cleaned up. It's, 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 I'm trying to get it done before Christmas. <laughs> All right, so obviously um, ca cables there for the GPOs. Uh, all of this stuff's gonna get pinned back to here so it's out of the way. All of that just clears the fridge, so I'm very, very close on, on clearances for there. We've got a negative bus bar in here, so all of my negatives can run to that. And then the negative wire basically runs back into the battery out to there. So it's super simple. Relay to run the travel buddy. That's all there. I've mounted it all in, all in here. Sorry. I've mounted it all in there because I'm trying to keep everything out of sight, out of mind. And it's super, super quick and easy to get the fridge out, which is like five screws and we're done. It's easy. On the other side, not gonna show you the batteries just yet. Um, I do have the fridge. The one with the Evercool fridge. So actually, I think I said this earlier in the video, so I won't bother doing that again now, but Evercool fridge, that's going in very soon. And batteries. So, I actually paid full, when I say full price, like I used my own promo code for these batteries. Um, they're on sale, Black Friday sales, everything else. I didn't ask them for free stuff. I just, I've already got these batteries, so I believe in them, I like them. So I've actually got proper skin in the game with this one. So, gone with the iTech World batteries again. I've got two 200 amp batteries, so 400 amps of, of lithium battery again. And then the Renogy 3000 watt inverter slash charger up the top there. I'm, I'm still waiting on the uh, DCDC, no sorry, the, the MPPT solar controller to come in. Um, I don't think it's going to get it before Christmas, to be honest with you. Um, but the advantage is, because that's an inverter charger, I can run a, I can take a generator with me and 400 watt, 400 amps, that's going to last me, Jesus Christ, I don't know, week, week and a half. So if I'm going for any longer than that, I can take a little generator, use that to charge up the batteries and go from there. Because at the moment I have no way of charging this from 12 volt at all yet. So whether that be solar or from the car, I just haven't wired it in. I haven't bought a DC DC charger. Um, partly because of cost, just I'm trying to keep cost under, under control. But I know, I know I say that when I've just bought bloody three thousand dollars worth of lithium and stuff. But whatever <laughs> is what it is. Um, also from this point up here as well. So that's going to be my power inlet. I thought about having it on the outside of the um, of the camera, mounted on there. But it's just another point of water ingress, and it's another point of of dust ingress, it's another point of just something else I've got to do. It's going to get covered in mud on the front, so I'm trying to keep everything inside there. The doors, the seals are pliable enough that I'll be able to run a cord inside and still shut the door. So I'm going to run the, the power inlet for, for 240 in, up to that point there. Um, I've done the safety switch up in the top corner there as well, or the RCD, no, 
Jerky breaker, that's the one, jerky. Uh, so everything's protected for the, for the power points. Trying to do everything best I can. I am gonna get my Sparky mate to come and um, obviously certify all this and make sure I've done it properly. Um, but I am doing it all myself. Not recommended by any means, so um, if you're doing this yourself, do not do what I'm doing, because technically this is not correct. But at the end of it, I am gonna get a Sparky mat to come in and double check everything and give me a certificate for it if he's happy to do that, if he's checked it all. So I don't see a drama with that, but see, we'll see what happens. But anyway, technically I meant to get a Sparky to do that, just so you know. Um, all right, so I think the next part here, I'm actually just gonna try and wire up the batteries because at the moment I've just got an old Boshy one that I had in the 200. And it's just like alligator clips to a bloody, to an Anderson plug. And it's just, it's super bogan set up at the moment. But I want to wire in these batteries now, get that whole system working, and I'm going to feel so much more better. <laughs> the fact that it's, it's it's functional and it's going. So worst case scenario, if I don't get some other stuff done, at least I've got a fridge and cooker and everything else is there. Um, yeah, so that's the plan. I want to try and get all the 12 volt stuff done. Well, a smack of the, a whole bunch of the 12 volt stuff done now. So that's all in place, ready to go. So, let's do some wiring. A nice little trick with uh, thick cable, because a lot of pliers, you can't cut it properly, it just sort of crushes the cable. And you don't want to go out and spend a heap of money on proper cable cutters. Um, conduit cutters, these things are like 10 bucks, they're cheap as. I've already cut this, I'm just going to trim it a little bit. You can see, it... Gives you a beautiful cut on the end, it's nice. Nothing frayed, doesn't fall apart. Win-win! So this is kind of the easy part once you've done it. So you have to remember with thick cable, you can't sort of twist it into position where you want it. So you want to try and get the lugs in the right position. For this, for me, this one's going to sit that way, wrap around the battery and then go to the other negative. So I'm going to want to make sure I put my lug facing the right direction down. So I don't have to, so I don't have to try and twist it into position at the end of it there. Obviously that sort of, lines up nicely with the end of the sheath for the protect protective cover. Goes on, go to my, my 35. For this sort of thing, one, one crimp's enough for this size of lug anyway. Just having to that, I might do one just from the other side. Perfect. From there, make sure you always heat shrink, because and especially use the the glue filled ones, because it actually helps keep everything together. So if for some reason that lug comes slightly loose, at least at least it's glued together. So it sort of helps everything. Every every little bit of extra help you can give it, the better off you're going to be. Um, obviously, this cable all looks a little bit ratty because this is all leftover stuff I've had from other jobs. I'm trying to keep this as cheap as possible, so I didn't want to go out and buy fresh cable when I've got offcuts laying around everywhere. So I'm just trying to use what I got. Speaking of using what you got, my heat gun is at work. So, um, old jet boil to the rescue for the, for the heat shrink. <laughs> Total bogan ass. No, these screws not long enough. Probably the biggest downfall to a lot of battery places, they give you this little tiny body screw, which is great if you're just gonna put little tiny terminals on it. Gen of course it falls behind the battery. Generally if you're doing this size lithium or whatever, you got big bloody lugs on the end of it to, keep, to cope with the, the capacity of what you're gonna be pushing through it. Why? Why, oh why, why? I give you a little tiny buddy thing. Anyway. I've got these other ones here. These are just a high tensile, slightly longer one. They will do the job nicely. Just need some washers. 
Alright, so I need one more cable to go for the battery setup, so I need to link up the positive to the positive, and then that's the batteries linked up in parallel. Ooh. Yeah, parallel, yeah, series bumps up the voltage, parallel is keeping it as 12 volt. So, one more from pause to pause, and we're done for, for that part, and then we're gonna wire up a whole bunch of other stuff. Well, first time plugging in the shore power and nothing blew up. Thank God. <laughs> That's nervy. Okay, so finally at the point, I've done a bit of other stuff off camera because wiring's kind of boring to watch and it's just monotonous and you've got to just think about stuff. And when you've got a camera in your face, sometimes it's hard to think about stuff. So, when I say tidied up, it's relative to the job. Uh, it's five days out from Christmas and I'm trying to get this finished by Christmas so we can go camping in it. So this is gonna be revisited down the track and be tidied up even more. So just keep that in mind, people. <laughs> All right, so in behind the fridge, I know it looks like a bit of spaghetti, mainly because obviously that's all the switch panel up behind there. I've done the the water pump switches as well now. So I've made sure I've done it on a lock with the light so I can tell when, when it's on and off. You can tell it's just running out there at the moment. Because I still haven't done the other part, the tap and stuff, that's that's next. All right, so if I turn the lights back on, uh, that's everything there. The controller for the um, uh, inverter is in and working now. Inside here, try to keep all the wires out of the way. This is obviously the, the endo plug for the fridge. So it goes in there. All these wires will sort of just tuck up beside the fridge out of the way when it's in. I know it looks like a great big mess, but it's pretty much just loops. So that's just like the working length of cable that I, that I was using so I could actually do the connections and put them in and get it in and run, run it around. So I needed some length on the cable there. So a lot of that is just loops. It's not excess cable, so to say. Well, it is, but it's not. It's usable. So I think I'm almost there. Like I think I'm almost ready to chuck the fridge in. Technically, I'm missing the mounting kit for the fridge. That's still on its way. Good old Oz post. Um, but I'm gonna chuck the fridge in the hole now, so it's there. I just kinda wanna turn it on and just say it's working, because <laughs> it's an exciting part of it. I love it. Uh, batteries are obviously in, inverters in. I've actually added some, uh, added a great big fuse here. So for the inverter cable on the positive side, there's a 300 amp um, mega fuse. In there, so that's sort of rated to, to what the inverter is for. Uh, later on, I'm also going to be adding oh, what was it anyway, another fuse in between. So I think it's from I've got to add where's that go there. So I have to add another fuse between here and here. Sorry, I should hold the camera properly. Add another fuse between here and um, basically the battery in there. Um, because that's just the, basically a, a distribution block, so it's like a an extra pole for the for the battery, so I don't have to load the battery poles up. And then it goes out from that point, obviously the the shunt, that's the the Renergy Renergy 500 amp shunt, to the fuse block. That's purely a positive fuse block. I've got a negative one over there, so I'm gonna add some negative to that. And obviously back in the fridge fridge alcove, there's the um the negative bus bar as well. So there's plenty of extra negatives that are needed for there. I'm gonna put this fridge in. I'm super excited. I don't know why I'm so excited to get this fridge in. <laughs> Alright, let's do it.
Let's go light. Ah, it works. Hell yes. Epic. Ah, oh, I'm super excited about that. Go and love that. I've just got to cut out the carpet for the uh, battery monitor up here. And that's done. But I want to wait until I've got the, the mounting kit because I'm not sure how high it goes. So I might need to change that location just yet. <sighs> oh God, it's all. <laughs> I've never thought I'd be so excited just about put, just just for putting a fridge in. But it's seriously, it's like it's like standing at home. All right, cool. Fridge is in. What are we gonna do here today? Ah, oh, yes. So. Part of the reason why, this, why I'm leaving the, the door mounted on the right is because it up, rotates all the way around and you can get to it. If it was on this side, it would stop when it hits a strut, which is going to stop me from getting all the way around. Yes, I know when that's out, I'm only going to get to there and it's going to limit me for that freezer space. But at least I can do it to the full, full degree at that. At that point, it just means that drawer's got to be put away. But if I do it the other way, I can never do it at all. So. It's a compromise, I know, fully understand. Oh, so excited. All right, fridge is now permanently on. Seriously, this thing's never gonna get turned off. Um, with the Evercore fridge, I will do a long-term review, in, oh, well, long -term, a longer-term review in around about sort of six months, letting how it's going, because obviously after six months time from now, we should have done the Big Red Bash trip, which is what this whole camp is for. And we'll see how it lasts, especially on the corrugation. And mind you, we'll see how the whole trailer lasts yet. So, see how they go. Oh, so I need to get some drinks and chuck in here. I need to load this up already. All right, I'm going to get some drinks. Okay, so to go with the rooftop tent, drill these holes before, so we'll just explain. I want to get power up here for two reasons. One, so I can have a solar panel on top of the rooftop tent because that's pretty much the only source of power input I'm going to have at all, like, apart, apart from having a separate generator to charge it, because I don't have a DC to DC charger. Um, these things are like 12 bucks from eBay, it's just a, I don't know what they call them actually, um, penetration, roof, pen roof penetration thing. Um, I think you meant to have like positive negative each side, but I'm going to run dual core through both, so Twin core on this one, twin core on this one, one for the solar panel and one for power inside the rooftop tent. I want to put some USBs inside the, in, inside the rooftop, rooftop tent. So I've done that. I worked out when I had my uh, sheet down where the corner of the rooftop tent's going to go, where this goes. So one of them goes basically straight into the tent and then it's going to run it inside and be mounted down on that end because that's the, that's the end I'm going to have my head at. And this one's basically going to come up on top of the tent and fix into the solar panel from that side there. So it's just gonna go there. Silicon all that down, so I can do all this right now. Now I can just run cables through it, have them sitting up in a coil up here, ready to go for when the tent goes on, and then I can run everything while it's up here. That's the plan anyway. So, let's just cut a hole. Sniff it after cutting it, it stinks. Alright, grab a file, we'll clean this up.
Mickey Mouse. 